Welcome to the second show of The Metal Voice, uh, where we promote today's bands, classic bands. Uh, again, before there was any uh, Airborne, there was ACDC. Before there was Halloween or Ed Guy, there was Accept and Scorpion. So that's what the show is about, bringing you some of the new updates, uh, reviews, as well as uh, revisiting classic uh, band and uh, album memories. We're here to promote the purchase of CDs uh, and albums and vinyl. Right. And to give uh, the musicians what they their, their due. Their due. And one of the bands that, of course, started it all uh, back in 1980 and the uh, New Wobbin, uh, New Wave of British Heavy Metal. And that is as relevant today as they were back then. Iron Maiden. Iron Maiden, yes. Jim, what did it for you? What was the first experience with the, Maiden for yourself? I've seen Maiden so many times, but the first concert I went to was The Number of the Beast. At the Ver Verdun Auditorium in Montreal, I was there standing right in front and I had Dave Murray right in front of me the whole show. and. And I met Dave yeah, later on. Like, I earlier. actually met him and I spoke to him and I met him in a record store and we talked and there was nobody there so we had a time to talk and it was just amazing. You see him in concert, then you see him 20 years down the line and I had a nice little chat. And you know, they started off in the 1980s, uh, you know, major pressure at the end of the 70s for everybody to shave their heads, become a punk band. They stayed true. Steve Harris, founder of the group, stayed true to his roots, brought in the... Uh, different uh, guitarist, Dave Murray, of course, there since the beginning, uh, went to major lineup changes, uh, a little too many for my case personally, but look where they are today. They're still able to sell, again, what this album uh, we're about to review, Final Frontier. That's right, let's get into it. Went global, number Whoa. one, or around the world. So here you have the new release by Iron Maiden, was released six, seven months ago, 10 tracks, went number one all across the world. People actually went out and bought this album. For a band that's never been played on the radio. Never been played. Never had any marketing no or videos. any push. They're still as relevant today, like I said, as they were 20 it's years ago. because of the fans. It's those metal fans out there in the internet land and out there listening and watching our show. Watching those our are show. the people who went out to buy Iron Maiden's album, and that's a lesson. Good quality band, good quality music, people will pay 20 bucks for your CD. You know, since Bruce came back with the, with the band, uh, this is their fourth album now, not accounting the live yeah. one. Um, you know, he's always got that progressive influence. What, what I noted from this particular album, it's not only being one of their longest, there's a collaboration. There's only collaboration. one one, album, one song's uh, written solely by uh, Steve Harris. The rest are all collaborations with, yeah. uh, you know, Adrian Smith back in the band. A major influence in the sound. Uh, Bruce's uh, progressive leanings come out a little bit, probably a little bit less than the three prior albums, but... Uh, Let's get to it. Did you like this album? I mean, out of 10, how would you rate this album? Again, being made in nothing less than an eight, you wouldn't, you wouldn't expect anything less than an eight. What about the Blaze Blaze era? Blaze was, um, you know, wasn't Bruce, but those are two Bruce, solid, Bruce, two Bruce solid albums. One octave. Two solid albums. <laughs> yeah, he did, you know, in the studio, you can, even in the studio, you can hear to him, you know, gasping for breath, trying to keep <laughs> up with Bruce's ghost. But I mean, uh, they were two solid albums, some great songs that The Clansman yep. is still one yep. of my favorites. I, 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 even The Blaze Hero is great. But this album itself, so out of 10, what would you rate it? I give it, uh, you know, let me just start this by saying, I still believe in Made in those three minute songs. Wrathchild, um, Run to the Hills, uh, you know, everything's pushing eight minutes. For me, you know, I like the three minute songs every now and then. You miss uh, the three minute songs, I miss don't the you? Three songs. <laughs> But, uh, you know, again, hearing an acoustic guitar on a Maiden album, you know, they did that a couple of albums ago with Dance of Death, and they, 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 one of the tracks on here starts off that way, so... Uh, what again, would you, out of 10, what would you give this album? I'd give it an 8.5, 9. I would give it, I would give it a 9.5. The only reason I wouldn't go 10 is because of the production. I found the production was a little weak. Uh, it's, the, what's his name? Shirley, Shirley, Kevin Shirley. Shirley. Kevin Shirley. Yeah. Shirley. Uh, I never really liked Kevin Shirley as a producer. I mean, I don't think it's a bad Quick production. <laughs> I don't think it's a terrible production, I just don't think it was the best production. I don't think it captures the song, the quality of the songs. I think this is an amazing album. I think everybody should own it if you're a Maiden fan. This is somewhere between Rush meets Iron Maiden. And that's why we love Maiden, because we every time we buy an album, it's something new. It's something new. Uh, we don't expect. I, I don't like to know what... I, I don't, like, don't want to hear Rock, Rock Child over and over again. Mind you, I, I love Rock Child, but I want to hear something different from Maiden. They're pushing the envelope, that's what I like about the song. So, Jim, let's uh, get to the nitty gritty here. What's your classic Maiden lineup? Classic Maiden lineup would have to be the uh, first, I think, off the first album. Uh, maybe minus Dennis Stratton, I would say the Killers lineup. 
with Adrian Smith instead. So to me, the Iron Man, the first Iron Man album and, the, and Killers album was the, the best albums that I think Paul Giano, even though I think Bruce should have come into the fold, I just think Paul should have done one or two more albums. But again, uh, for me, it'd have to be the, the peace of mind uh, lineup. Of, uh, yeah. With the Nico and the band, not, uh, I mean, you know, the number of the beasts kind of launched him here in North America yeah. and not uh, taking anything away whatsoever from Clive Burke, but Nico was just the start of that album uh, with uh, doing it all in a single bass drum. Um, the flexibility of Nico, but plus you've had Adrian coming in, first album that Bruce was allowed to write for. Uh, Adrian and, and Dave were basically the two guitars that everybody talked about in the yeah. 80s. This album really brought them to the forefront, and for me, that would be my classic one. That was just going to go into the uh, vast tub of letters and emails we get every week. And this one's coming from Johnny from Montreal, and it reads... The Middle Guys, I really want to know, who's your favorite member from the Iron Maiden band? That's all, really. See you later. Peace out! That was weird. Well, who's your favorite member of Iron Maiden? You know, uh... I mean, Steve's the core, he's the founder, but I have to admit, that first tour I was able to uh, actually be there when Bruce came back, uh, kind of a greatest hits tour. Uh, the show launched here in Montreal, I was, I was lucky enough to be there. I mean, when Bruce came back on stage, the crowd went to a whole other level. I mean, when he joined the band after Paul Diano, he brought them to a whole other level. Uh, the human air raid siren is still able today to scream just like he did back then and sing. Nobody has the power or the longevity as uh, Bruce Dickinson to play night after night in front of all those decibels at his age. Uh, besides everything else he's doing, flying around the world, I mean, for me, it, it all comes down to Bruce. Yeah, to me, it comes down to Steve Harris. I mean, how many songs has, has he written? Like a thousand? A thousand Me by name, just uh, there, just, end of story. I mean, so they have, what, 13, 14, 15, 100 albums, and he's written, like, 90% of those those songs. To me, it's Steve Harris's bass, the way he plays bass. You can't even those see his fingers. Those fingers that you can't even see. You know, and so be Steve Harris for me, but of course, there's so many, you know, everyone else is falls second. Yeah. So, anyways, thanks for watching, uh, Metal Voice. Uh, oh. Yeah, I think that's it. We've wrapped it up. Tune Thanks. in every week. Our website's www.themetalvoice.com. Or you can email us at themetalvoice at gmail.com. What's important is agree with us, disagree with us, but as long as we're talking metal and not Justin Bieber or Lady Gaga, that's all that matters. So Thanks for tuning in. Go buy yourself a copy of Iron Maiden, The Final Frontier.